I played 200 Days of Stardew Valley Expanded. If you haven't seen my first 100 days, I highly recommend you check that out before watching this one. This video has come out a little bit longer than our first one because I had a helpful comment letting me know that I can speak a little bit fast, so I'm trying to slow down a little, and also really due to the sheer amount of things there were to do. This time, we had four goals. I wanted to find all the golden walnuts. This means we actually have to complete the community centre this time, and make it to Ginger Island. Number two was to marry Victor, because I needed to put some more time into increasing our friendships in general, but also because he seems nice. Number three, buy an obelisk, because who wants to walk? Just one though, because I must remind you, I am a noob. And number four, get a full set of Iridium tools. I managed one tool in the last video, so let's try and complete the set. So with that, let's jump back in. On day 101, I started by checking my journal because I couldn't for the life of me remember what I was doing. I gave some solar essence to the wizard for his birthday, which meant I got this new cutscene that I didn't actually skip. I didn't really know what was going on, but I think that was kind of the point. I chopped trees in the forest till I completed Robin's resource rush. Then it was time for us to start getting Victor to like me. Thankfully, he likes crocuses. Maybe I'm allergic to him though because I just suddenly... Just kidding, I was sick again. I then decided to check my community centre progress to discover that it wasn't just the red cabbage I was waiting for. I also needed a pomegranate and a truffle. Ugh. This day was the last day of the night market. By this point, I actually figured out the mermaid show and then went to the submarine so I could catch the blobfish that we failed to get last time. On day 102, I got an invitation to learn some magic with the wizard. I also found out that my secret friend was Sam. For some reason, it took me three attempts to get this maple syrup, but we're gonna pretend that didn't happen and go and buy a pomegranate sapling to plant in the greenhouse. From there, I ran to the wizard's tower because I was really excited to learn some magic, and he made me a drink with something weird again, which, uh... I wasn't sure what we were doing at first, but then I saw that I can now change my appearance. CBA to do that right now though. I also finally set up my greenhouse for the first time because I honestly forgot I had it. I was also getting sick of having to get hay for the chickens during the other seasons so I removed the walls so that they could become more free range. I started day 103 by visiting the secret woods for hardwood where I hit level 9 foraging. Since it was a good luck day, I headed off to the desert to attempt skull caverns, completely forgetting to eat my spicy eel for a good while. Yep, still a dingus. This was a good day. I hit level 10 mining and got my first prismatic shard and a red cabbage seed. I got down to floor 49 before passing out at 2am, which for me at this point was not too bad, but I was gutted to miss that diamond. At least I'm a gemologist now though. On day 104 I planted my red cabbage seed and reached level 10 farming which I was super excited about, and I of course had to share this with Victor. And what says success better than chocolate cake? And since it's her birthday, Evelyn gets some too. I still didn't get what this swan statue is about. Oh wait, that's a pelican! <laughs> oh my god, duh. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> In the afternoon, I went to the Adventurer's Guild and collected a vampire ring and sold my spare weapons before heading into the mines for coal. When I went to sleep for the day, I chose the artisan profession. After browsing the travelling cart on day 105, I sped off to the desert as we were blessed with yet another good luck day. With my first prismatic shard, I went down to get the galaxy sword. Yeah! This time, I actually remembered my spicy eel, and even though I got a fair amount of gems this day, I only came out with 25 Iridium ore, which is really what I came in here for. At least we hit level 10 combat though, and I chose the brute profession, small and mighty and all that. The next day, I went to pick a special request to do, so we went with the rock rejuvenation. Marnie was also asking for a ruby, so I guess I'll take care of that too. I then went to Robins to ask her to upgrade my coop to the deluxe one, and when I went to forage by the train station, Clint asked me to gather materials for explosives, so our to-do list was growing again. Luckily, I already had everything we needed for all three tasks so I proceeded to chase Emily through town with the gems that she wanted, and then headed to find Marnie to give her a ruby. My final stop was Clint's with the stuff for his explosives, and I feel like we got a decent amount of gold for that. On day 107, I got my own sewing machine in the mail. I immediately went to place it in my house when I was alerted to an explosion at the railroad. I put down my sewing machine and ran up there to investigate. It looks like Clint's opened up the summit. I've never been here before. And also, look at all the forage and artifacts. As I got a new artifact, I decided to gather my geodes to take to Clint's on day 108. I don't know if I was distracted here or something whilst I was trying to run to the minecart. Where am I going? Anyway, we opened a fair amount of geodes and donated them for a few rewards. I also made a start on the mysterious key quest and dropped a rainbow shell at the train station which meant the next step was getting some beats. I couldn't do that yet though, so I did some skull caverns for the afternoon, and I'm pretty happy with the goodies we brought home the next morning. As you can see, I got a couple of dinosaur eggs, so I started day 109 by putting one in the incubator. It was also the Feast of the Winter Star today, but apparently I'm allergic to festivities too. <coughs> Once that was over, I gave Sam his cranberry wine which he seemed to like, and Shane was actually my gift giver, and he got me a jade. 
Being half Asian, I loved this gift because jade is a symbol of many good things. On day 110, Gus was asking for an albacore. Funnily enough, there was one at the travelling cart, so I snapped that up. And then I headed to Marnie's to get another pig which I named Gummy, and a couple of rabbits, one named Grabu and the other named Jonah. As I passed the help board, I saw that Victor was asking for an earth crystal, and obviously we'll help him out if it'll earn his love. After giving Clint an emerald for his birthday, I dropped by the saloon to give Gus his albacore, almost accidentally eating it. Gross. And then went to Victor's house, where I got this cutscene about his books. I mean, I'm not personally much of a reader, but I'll happily listen. And with that, here's your earth crystal, Victor. Look, he called it perfect! On day 111, I went foraging at the beach, and foraged some more in the secret woods. I then decided I might try to be efficient, so I spent the rest of the day hoeing all the tiles in my field in prep for spring, which was just around the corner. On day 112, I made more quality sprinklers, and then I had to go back and re hoe the tiles that decayed overnight. My final afternoon of the year was chill. I fished up at the lake while smelting some gold. Gold takes ages though, so it was pointless me bringing the furnaces really, because I only got one round of ingots in. On my way home, I wanted to try and do that secret note about the thing behind the community centre, but I had no luck. I ended the last day of my first year by levelling up fishing and made myself 7,000 gold. On day 113, Kent was at my door, but that didn't matter to me because I then saw all the hoeing we did was a complete waste of time. Ugh. Well, here we go again. It was nice to be able to let the animals back out though. As I walked into town for the first time this year, I had this cutscene about a new community garden, which I guess came with a new update. It's cool to have another space to be able to use, but I think it'll be a while before I can make the most of it. Now it's time to get our seeds. I grabbed a few garlic because they were new, and, well, garlic is life, and then grabbed 96 cauliflower seeds. We ran home and got to wet planting, and it was at this point I was regretting not upgrading my watering can over winter, because now I had to water all of these one by one. With all that hard work, we slept well that night, and woke up on day 114 with our red cabbage finally being ready. Having just picked up a truffle from the pigs, this meant that the last thing left for the community centre was now the pomegranate. I went to drop off what I did have though, and was super excited about the seed maker. I randomly remembered about that secret note from the Jojo truck guy, so I went to say hello and he asked me for a rabbit's foot, so I gave him one in exchange for a special charm which permanently increased my luck. Super happy about that. On my way home, I grabbed a new quest from the special request board. We're gonna get some leaks for George. We put that on the back burner though, and went to Skullgavens on day 115, despite it only being a neutral luck day. I feel like it still went pretty well though, and even got our first treasure floor where we got some life elixir. And we made it all the way down to 100. This floor was pretty creepy. And Mr. Key asked us to drink his special milk. Why is it purple? It was honestly gross, but we had our health increased. We ended up passing out on floor 101, but all in all, still a successful day. On day 116, I wasted a farm totem. That's not milk. I then went to Clint's to get more geodes and troves opened, donating all the new stuff to the museum, including one of my prismatic shards since we now had a few. And luckily, I got a few more farm totems as one of the rewards. Kent asked me for a dandelion on the help board, so I went to meet him at the summit to give it to him, along with some wine for his birthday. I then did a bit of night foraging in the forest to try and get those leeks for George, but I only found a couple before I ran out of time. On day 117, I was hunting for leeks again when I got this new cutscene with Victor, so I guess we're making progress. This pretty much made me forget what I was doing, so I went to that old community garden and started clearing it. I got about two thirds of the way done before my attention span said no more, and I left. Instead, I went and found this bit of gold, and went home to find a worthy spot for him, which got me in the decorating mood. So I went and finally finished off my paths before realising my garlic has been ready all day and I haven't picked it yet, and then I just turned in for an early night. On day 118, I crafted the oil machine, and then set off my first bottle and went into town to get my hoe upgraded. I needed to occupy myself whilst waiting for my hoe, so I checked the request board, and it was just Clint, once again, asking for copper ore. I decided, not this time Clint, I am done. Instead, I headed out to that massive forest to try and get some more leeks, but also to go fishing there because I heard from Willy that I could catch the king salmon there, so I wanted to give that a go, and we actually did it. This gold quality one is worth 1031 gold, so I hung around for the evening to try and catch some more, but to be honest, at the end of the day I was slightly disappointed at the amount of gold we got from fishing. On day 119, I went to hunt down some more leeks because we were closing in on that deadline. When I checked my forage chest, I found out I now had enough to give out for the quest, so I gathered them and dropped them off at Evelyn's kitchen. I'll take two grand for a few leeks. As I came out of the house, Lewis was walking past which was perfect timing for his birthday gift, and from there I headed up to the mountains for a spot of fishing. I woke up on day 120 with a coffee machine in the mail, and if anyone knows anything about me it's how much I love coffee, so that was going straight in my kitchen. And I could finally collect my new steel hoe. I then spent the rest of the day in the mines, but in all honesty, I cannot for the life of me remember why I was here. Was I here for iron? Was it to smack some dust sprites? I don't know. I left around midnight going home to craft myself an iridium band. 
Day 121 was a good luck day, so I gathered a few supplies of Skull Caverns. You'd think by now I'd got better at combat, but I… yeah, it's still bad. Somehow, I made it down to floor 61 where I passed out without dying and got a good quantity of stuff. So on day 122, I started by selling some of our riches. A little dino attached today, and we named it Grillo. I mean, look how cute! It was time to pick up another special request, so I went with a new one from Susan to make 50 quality fertiliser, which meant we had some fish to catch. I went back home to get my fishing rod, but then I decided to make some paths to all the things behind my house because obviously that's a perfect use of my time right now. I mean, I suppose it is good because we do walk a little bit faster on paths. And then I also won't have to worry about trees and stuff getting in my way. We did leave it unfinished though. Oh my god, does that not look so annoying? At least we made a decent amount of money today though. On day 123, I added a bit more to the path, leaving it unfinished in a different spot, and then popped down to Marnie's to get a couple more pigs who are named Z and, uh, Ketcho. Sure. I stopped putting off the fishing and spent the afternoon at Shearwater Bridge, catching mostly an absolute butt-ton of shad, and then did some night fishing up at the mountain lake where I caught a bunch of frogs. Why am I holding the poor thing like that? I don't know why I care. I am, after all, about to shove it in my backpack. Which, can we take a minute to think about how gross this backpack would be in real life? Imagine receiving a daffodil as a gift, but it stinks of fish. <gasps> anyway, on day 124, I woke up to a load of batteries which I was super excited about. I shared my excitement with Victor by giving him a rabbit's foot, which he loved, and then headed down to the beach to catch some more fertilizer. And by the end of the day, I managed to craft 30. Day 125 was egg hunt day, so I grabbed- no, I- I grabbed my coffee, and then headed outside to notice that most of my cauliflowers were ready. So we now had a bunch of harvesting to do before we were off to the festival. Um, Pam? You're going the wrong way. First thing I did there was buy a hundred, oh, nope, 200 strawberries, and then it was time for the egg hunt. This year, I was gonna beat Sophia. I could feel it. I wasn't gonna miss that egg from last time, except hold on a minute, the eggs have changed places. What? I thought I was screwed, so I just did my best, getting annoyingly close to catching an eighth egg when time ran out. I don't even know if I beat Sophia because Abigail won. The disappointment smelt like rotten eggs, so I went home for the night to start planting my strawberries. On day 126, I went to check the travelling merchant, who had a pack of beet seeds, so I grabbed those to whack in my greenhouse for Mr. Key's quest, and then headed to Marnie's to finally pick up auto grabbers because milking the cows every day was getting so annoying. For Haley's birthday, I gave her a piece of cheese because it matches her hair, and Haley probably likes stuff that matches, right? Oh, and also, I finally managed to pick up a pomegranate, so guess what? <laughs> We finally completed the community centre. It's done. We freaking did it. I couldn't believe it. After all this time. Now so much more of the game was about to open up to us, and I was filled with optimism and excitement. So we celebrated by giving Victor some cheese, and catching our last few fish for the fertiliser request. To use every possible minute of this day, I decided to add to my paths, but I didn't realise till I made them that I made 100 of the wrong ones. I sold them because I didn't want to look at them anymore, and then I went to bed. On day 127, I woke up with a mail asking for yet another leak for George, but annoyingly, I didn't have one. When I went out to hunt for one, I got this new cutscene with Marlon. He took me to the sewer so I could finally get in there for the first time to meet Krobus. This would explain my confusion in the last episode where I couldn't figure out how to get into the sewer because in the expanded version, you needed to have completed the community centre first. I love this deviation. This cutscene was really super cute and is actually one of my favourites. I realised now that it was salmon berry season. I wanted to focus on foraging as many berries as I could, and whilst on my berry rounds I dealt with loads of quests. I dropped off Susan's fertiliser for 4,000 gold, then went to give Evelyn the leak, also coming out with a recipe for cookies. From there, I picked up a new special request to kill 50 dust spirits, which I always thought they were called dust sprites but whatever, and then went to the sewers to grab that dark talisman, but also picked up a void egg and the star drop from Krobus. All in all, an extremely productive day ruined by my dog blocking me and passing out right next to my bed. On day 128, I got loads of cooking recipes in the mail. Susan taught me how to make some more expensive alcohol, and then I got rid of that barrier thing at the railway cave, armed with some void mail for the henchman, so I could retrieve the magic ink, which I gave straight back to the wizard. When I left his tower, I received what felt like my 847th cutscene with poor little Jazz getting lost in the woods. So we returned her safely to Marnie. We picked some more berries on the way to the beach, but we were met with another damn cutscene. But this one's okay because it was the four heart one with Victor, and that was followed by another one with a lot of yelling from Andy. All that socialising was getting exhausting, so I dropped off the materials for the boat in Willy's store, and then escaped the rest of the humans by heading into the mines to squish some dust sprites for the evening. On day 129, I was really hyped for going to Ginger Island for the first time ever. Yes, ever. So I gathered up my tools and hopped right on that boat. And let me tell you, the amount of excitement? I could barely contain myself. Before I followed Leo into the jungle, I noticed these tortoises, which I tried to move out of the way, but they were far too sleepy. 
So into the forest I went, where I picked up my first golden walnut and gave it to the parrot in the treehouse. When I left, I followed the flame to the north, trying to get whatever walnuts I could on the way, and then headed into the volcano for the first time, where I was warned that this place was going to be lethal. I explored for a little while to see what was here, but left on level 3 because I was worried about finding my way out with my terrible sense of direction. This walnut also drove me nuts, because I couldn't figure out how to get to it, so I left it alone for now and went home with a total of 6 golden walnuts. On day 130, I started by giving Pam a truffle oil for her birthday, and then got back on the boat for Ginger Island. This day was dedicated to getting as many golden walnuts as I could to unlock the western region and the farm, starting with trying to get this one again because I am a dingus. The definition of insanity. Doing something over and over again and expecting different results. Look at the disappointment, I can feel it through the screen. I found out you could get some in the volcano, so that was my next stop, but my loot goblin ways were hindering me because I kept running out of backpack space. Day 131 was my first strawberry harvest of the year. Then on my way to the beach I accidentally gifted my mango sapling to Kent. I only wanted to talk to you dude, why did you have to take my stuff? You're not even grateful. At 13 golden walnuts I now had enough to unlock the west, where I found this lady who needed help getting back a keepsake. For now I continued on my quest for walnuts, picking up another 10, with an extra one I found in the jungly bit. I was on my way back to the volcano when I saw I could repair this bridge, so I rescued Professor Snail and grabbed a few more walnuts. On day 132, I got some cookies in the mail from Evelyn, which I immediately went and sold. I then made a couple of beach totems, because walking there every day was really becoming a pain. When I got to Ginger Island, I checked out Professor Snail's tent, before heading back into the volcano because I was determined to reach the end today, and I made it there just barely alive, getting the chance to meet Lance for the first time. What really caught my attention though was this chest, because that is the way of the loot goblin, and inside was a prismatic shard. The next day, I was greeted at my door by the wizard, who asked me to learn some warp magic at his tower, and then a wild lance appeared, who gave me his schedule, except I wasn't quite sure why. And then, Lewis came by to tell me about community day tomorrow. That was a lot of information all at once, so I just harvested my strawberries, and then shoved Lance's schedule in a chest where I promptly forgot about his existence. Since I was in town today, I decided to start the quest for the old lady, so I headed to give the wall photo to Kent, who gave me some tomato salt. I suddenly realised I still had like 50 dust spirits to kill, so I dropped that other quest for now and headed to the mines to squish some little fuzzies. As you can see, I'm still no better at combat. We managed to finally finish it though at half past midnight. On day 134, I hatched my first void chick, settling on the name Gash. This badass chick deserves all the pets. It was community day, so I headed up to the community centre to check it out. It was cool to see a bit of life in this place, sure, but there was nothing I could find to actually do, so I left. This felt like a bit of a waste of time, really. With the new week, I went to pick up a new special request where Pam was asking for the strong stuff so I headed right to Piers for potato seeds, but he had the day off for community day. How dare! Instead, I went to Ginger Island to try and get some more walnuts, and found this little secret cave where I spent the evening attempting the puzzle. It took me a few attempts, but I did it. We now had our 20, so I rushed to get the house fixed and made it to bed just in time. The first half of day 135 was prepping my brand new island farm, and then I figured out how to kill this little wormy dude. Wait, he has legs? That ain't no worm, what is that? <laughs> I then went to check out the cave next to my house and found a new froggy friend who was asking for the pink thing, the juicy thing. This man's after me melons! What the f***? Yeah, I think I want to go home. The next day was the flower dance, and I managed to get Victor to dance with me. This was the first time literally ever anyone said yes to me. I do, however, look so out of place. I'm literally just doing squats and I'm sitting here cringing. On day 137, I spent ages hoeing in the mines to get the final dwarf scroll, and we finally got it so now we can complete the set. When I got home, I slapped down some speed growth for Pam's potatoes, not realising I've made the same mistake as last time. Don't at me. <laughs> on day 138, I checked in on my greenhouse, expanding my ancient crop fruit. I got round to donating that final dwarf scroll so now we could speak their language, and I went straight to the mines to see what was up. We bought the weathered floor recipe and a rare crow, and then headed to the desert to meet Sandy for the first time. Yes, the first time. After acquiring more beet seeds, we gave her the rose in exchange for a TV remote, which we ran straight to George who gave us an arctic shard, which I bought to the wizards but first he fed us something weird? For the arctic shard, I was given a worm, which we handed to Willy and he gave us the pirate locket, which worked out really well because I was planning to go to Ginger Island on day 139 to return to the old lady. She gave us the recipe for fairy dust, and some more golden walnuts. Now that we could finally speak dwarf, I returned to the volcano to see the shop there, buying the two recipes they had. On day 140, I forgot to record, so that brings us into summer. On day 141, I cleared my field of dead strawberries and potatoes. Wait, why didn't I just use my greenhouse? Or Ginger Island? Oh my god. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. 
I went into town to buy blueberry seeds, and then toddled off home to plant them before heading back off to Ginger Island to enchant our pickaxe for the first time. We got the efficient enchantment. On day 142, our tarot was ready, and I hunted for some wall garden walnuts so that on day 143, I could free the island trader. And oh my god, aren't they adorable? It was becoming apparent that I'd need a good quantity of dragon's teeth, so the day was spent in the volcano trying to get some, which is also what I tried to do on day 144, but I didn't find any. I did, however, get these cool dragon scale boots. On day 145, I harvested my bees, then I wanted to upgrade my axe, but Clint wasn't there? I headed to Lewis's to put the beets in the fridge, and then added some more paths by my chest to make it easier to get around. On day 146, I gathered enough eggs for Gus's famous omelette, but my dumbass has been putting them in the mayo machine, so I didn't actually have enough. Clint was back in the store so I could now upgrade my axe, and then gave Demetrius my spare puffer fish for his quest. I headed to the mines for the evening as I needed to kill two lava crabs, and found this amazing mushroom floor, which greatly helped with the foraging level. No luck on the crabs though. The following day I went foraging at the desert, and then gave the sand dragon its last meal. When I got home, I placed more paths because I was sick of these trees growing in my way. But whilst I was doing this top part of the farm, I accidentally stepped into this cutscene where the wizard showed me our own nexus. Pretty cool. On day 148, I created a warp room for my farm, and made some sashimi for Pierre, who rewarded me with a thousand gold. I picked up my shiny new axe, and then agreed to take down the prismatic slime for the wizard. I dropped off the remaining eggs for Gus's omelette, before heading up to the mines where I found the prismatic slime literally on my first try. That was easy. I used my new nexus to get to the wizards, and found these dewdrop berries in the enchanted grove. Look at those stats, they're amazing! And they last till the next day! After that distraction, I handed over the jelly, and was promptly shooed away, so I went to the secret woods because I was determined to hit level 10 foraging. Finally! I could become a botanist! Oh wait, I forgot I chose the wrong profession before though. So for now, I selected lumberjack. On day 149, I got the recipe for monster musk. As it was a good luck day, I wanted to give Skull Caverns a go with the power of the dewdrop berry. Quite a few gems were obtained, and we got a couple of treasure floors, but they literally just had a seed maker and some energy tonic, and one of them just had bean seeds. On day 150, I reset my foraging professions, and asked Clint to upgrade my watering can. I got an early night, so I chose the botanist path, and made a fair amount of gold too. Day 151 was the first time I picked up iridium quality truffles. It was the day of the luau, so I added some goat's cheese to the pot which the governor seemed to be obsessed with, and ended the day by crafting a few more crystallariums to put jade into. The next day, Gus gave me a jukebox. When I went into town, I skipped the Emily Bird cutscene because I was eagerly awaiting the opening of Pierre's. Why, you may ask? Because we can now get the bouquet to try and date Victor, and he accepted. From there, I wanted to go collect my watering can when I saw Clint going for a wander. Where do you think you're going, sir? I need my watering can! On day 153, I waited out in the rain for Robin to open so that I could drop off the materials to restore the old shed, but then I found out this was not the place, ya dingus. Before I went home to find the right spot, I picked up my watering can and then started the upgrade to the Iridium Axe. This was a mistake though, as I had a whole bunch of trees blocking the path to the shed. I even tried blowing them up to find out that you can't. So I made my escape to Ginger Island to show our froggy friend our new Bombo Juicy Melons, and in exchange he gave me his nuts. He next wanted the yellow tickled thing, so we planted some wheat. Day 154 was a blueberry day, and I at long last picked up my club card. Should have done it a week ago. The next morning, I ran into Clint's store until he unlocked it so that I could pick up my new axe, and then headed to the special request board to grab Marlin's mysterious venture. He basically just wanted a bunch of bombs. With our trusty new axe, I could finally get into the shed, where I found the box to drop off the materials, and then laid a path to make it easier to get to. But I hated it, so I destroyed it all. On day 156, I hung out in the mines until the Adventurers Guild was opened. When I went to see Marlon, he showed me a place to make a warp broom to the mountains, and then I dropped off his bombs and collected the slime charmer ring. When I went home, I spent the evening replacing those paths with stone ones, and I think that looks much better. On day 157, Robin unveiled the refurbished shed which has loads of space for aging wine, and an upper floor where we can grow even more indoor crops. The first thing I did was check what we needed to make casks, to find out that we can't until our house is fully upgraded. Which, speaking of upgrades, we asked Clint to upgrade our hoe and then headed to Ginger Island to show our froggy friend the yellow tickling thing. I then decided to fix up the beach resort, which looked lovely, and then spent the rest of the day in the volcano where I enchanted the axe with the swift upgrade. Day 158 was spent in the volcano again, farming for more cinder shards and dragon's teeth. I also enchanted my sword. On day 159, my garlic was ready, so I brought our froggy friend to see, in exchange for the last of his golden walnuts. With that now dealt with, I zoomed off home to harvest all of my blueberries, and asked Robin to build us a shed. 
She also stopped by my own house to ask for 900 stone to build a bridge. On day 160, we got a couple of good achievements, and then I made myself a farm computer which we placed over here. The rest of the day was spent at Ginger Island on our quest for more walnuts. On day 161, we cleaned up this area because it was getting kind of fugly, and got this weird request from Lewis for some truffle oil. Why can't I ask him? I'm gonna ask him. Lewis, why do you need this oil? Ew. His response grossed me out a little bit, so I struggled to collect my reward. Day 162 was a productive day in Skull Cabins looking for stone and iridium, but we were absolutely insulted by this treasure floor. Corn seeds? Are you kidding me? This one was a little better though. I'll take some farmer's lunches. The next day, our shed was completed, so I picked up all of my kegs and moved them in there along with a few more that we just crafted. I left one outside though because that would show us when our wines were ready much more easily. See, I'm learning. It was Victor's birthday, so we gave him a rabbit's foot and then made a start with collecting some hardwood for Robin's project. On day 164, I got this really cute cutscene with Victor. I won't tell you exactly what happens, but we took a walk to hang out at the summit. How lovely. After that amazing start to the day, I headed to Robin's to buy some stone for her bridge. Wait, why couldn't she just use this stone? She has unlimited stone! Anyway, I also got her to build me a fish pond, throwing it down in a temporary spot for now. Day 165 was a good luck day again, so I headed to Skull Caverns. This was the worst good luck day I've ever had. This treasure chest is mocking me. And when I tried to make an escape, I died. I don't know if something went wrong though, or if I just got really lucky, but I didn't lose anything. I was so confused. On day 166, I pre-dropped off Robin's hardwood, so now all I had to do was chop it. I then sailed over to Ginger Island, where I visited this area for the first time. I caught another golden walnut, and played some darts with the pirates. On day 167, we got our last blueberry harvest, and we got a cutscene at Clint's, where we were asked for 30 gold bars for a strange commission. What we actually came here for was to open some golden coconuts where we got a walnut, a fossil and some pineapple seeds, and then returned home to replace our sprinklers with iridium ones in prep for four. Very grateful for the UI mod helping me not to mess this up. On day 168, we finished gathering the hardwood for Robin's project and collected our reward. I love doing these types of quests this way around because then I can't be stopped by their house being closed on the final night for the hand in. And now we're into four. On day 169, I planted 150 cranberries, and a few artichokes as well because they were new. I went back to Pierre's and bought more cranberries before going home to plant them. I also had 150 pumpkins to plant, but I didn't have enough time to water everything before the day was over. I did my best though. On day 170, I added to my ancient fruit crop, and added a path to the greenhouse. I wish it stayed all horizontal though because this kinda looks a bit weird, but whatever. And then the rest of the day was spent in the mountain mines looking for gold, which continued into day 171 where I gathered 123 pieces of ore. Not bad. On day 172 I moved my coop so that all of my animals are in one area, and then asked Robin to upgrade my house. I picked up a special request for Victor's mum, who was asking for some starfruit wine, cheese and goat's cheese. Wow, that is fancy. Today was the first rainy day since getting 10 hearts with Victor, so I ran over to the old mariner to pick up the mermaid pendant, and then just about managed to catch him on the pier whilst he was on his way to Ginger Island. And of course, he accepted our proposal. With that major goal completed, I headed to Clint's to drop off the 30 gold bars he asked for, and was disappointed to find no reward at all in my journal. Then I headed to Ginger Island to plant my 200 starfruit that I left in a chest for the past few weeks. I'm gonna need some for that wine. On day 173, I picked up an oyster off the floor right by Elliot and gave it to him for his birthday. I popped to the secret woods for some hardwood, and then found Clint waiting by my house to let me know he cleared the path to the old shed. So this was the reward for the strange commission. On day 174, I asked Clint to upgrade my watering can, and then headed to Ginger Island to complete this gem puzzle thing for a few golden walnuts, which meant I finally collected enough to unlock Mr. Key's walnut room. He said it's a secret room, but I feel like that big purple door with a giant golden walnut in it kinda gives things away. Anyway, after watching the rest of that cutscene, I checked the challenge board where it's up to the four precious stones quest, as I knew I had enough prismatic shards at home. I also went and checked the profession. I also went and checked the profe I also went and checked the profe- like, <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> I also went and checked the perfection tracker, and uh, we have some work to do. Day 175 was my wedding day with Victor. It was a day of celebration, and I got to bring him home to a brand new extended house. I didn't check it out yet though, because I noticed it was a good luck day, so I geared up and headed to Skull Caverns where I got down to floor 82 before passing out for the day. On day 176, I moved my coffee machine from the middle of the kitchen, and then sold off some of our goodies from mining the day before. I found this mysterious bridge over here, which looks so ugly, so I tried to remove it, but I couldn't. I guess Victor must have built it here. It was our first cranberry harvest of the year, so I worked on that, and then gave my sturgeon a diamond that it asked for. Whilst gathering blackberries, I went and picked up my steel watering can, and upgraded to an iridium hoe, before stopping in at Olivia's house to drop off the cheese. 
I also got a new cutscene at the abandoned vineyard, where there was this new bundle, but I couldn't read what was written this time. On my way home, the wizard shat me up. A mysterious golden scroll appeared in my pocket, so I went to investigate with the wizard, but he couldn't understand it either, so he had to ask for help from this witch. Looks like it was a young Junero requesting 200 starfruit, which luckily, we'd already just planted some. When I woke up on day 177, Victor told me he watered some of my crops, but I have all sprinklers. You smell that? Bullsh**. I stormed off into town to pick up my iridium hoe, but it wasn't ready yet, so I planned to clear my head by foraging blackberries all day, except I got distracted by this warp point where Peaches gave me an ancient Junimo scroll and brought me to their friends so that I could make a warp room. But when the cutscene ended, I was back outside, so I went right back in again. This whole area is like a maze, but there was this tablet which told me to follow the mushrooms, and they led me to this sword that I couldn't pick up, so I left. On day 178, I actually picked up my Iridium hoe, and then spent most of the day foraging blackberries before heading to Ginger Island to work on the tropical fish request for Willy. On day 179, I went to upgrade to an Iridium watering can, completely forgetting I needed the gold one first. Dingus. And then went over to Beers to buy the deluxe speed grow for my starfruit, not knowing I could have got it from Sandy's today, much cheaper. Double dingus. Anyway, I went and slapped it straight onto my starfruit so I could start on the wine a little bit earlier, and dropped off my prismatic shards for 40 key gems. And of course, since I've never played Junimo Kart in my life, I decided to choose the 50k challenge, which meant day 180 was completely dedicated to this. And this is how my first attempt went. Got a little bit of a good start yet? Yep, we made the first jump, grabbed the cherry, and we're dead. I spent a real life hour here, and it was driving me bonkers. Then I realised it must be quite late in the game day surely, so I took a break to see that no time had passed at all. I gave it another 15 minutes, and I did get a little bit better, but still… No. <laughs> My partner Michael, who was playing Elden Ring, wanted to give it a go, and this is how that went. This is harder than the boss I just did. My god, all that concentration made me hungry. On day 181, I checked out my brand new basement. Okay, I've seen it now. I went outside to craft another 57 casks, which I immediately went and placed. Then got round to get my gold watering can started. Of course, the afternoon was back at the saloon. I was determined to finish this challenge. We aren't giving up. We can do this. Another hour here, and we didn't, we, we didn't do it. So I went for some deforestation instead. On day 182, I started aging some wine and then cleared up the area outside the restored shed before heading to Ginger Island to catch the remaining tropical fish for Willy's quest, because at least we can complete that one. On day 183, I did a walk of shame back to Mr. Key's walnut room to pick up a new challenge since we suck at Juno Cart. I accepted the one where you have to get to 100 and Skull Caverns without eating or drinking whilst there. When I got home, I collected my deluxe fish tank from the mail and then harvested all of my pumpkins. My watering can was ready, so I went and picked that up. Then accepted Pierre's prime produce, which is a bit annoying considering I just harvested 31 gold star pumpkins. I even debated resetting the day, but I decided to just roll with it. In the end, I ended up selling those pumpkins, instead buying 100 bok choy seeds because they were the fastest to grow. Oh wait, no, 150. It's 150. Then it was time to plant. Day 184 was the day of the fair, so I set up my display with better items than last year, and then awkwardly followed Lewis around whilst checking out the competition myself. And this time, I actually won with a score of 98. Thanks for the tokens, dude. With those, I bought a triple shot espresso and a fedora. On day 185, I got my first sturgeon row and dropped it straight in a preserves jar. To prep for Skull Caverns, I went to buy bombs from the dwarf, then fished out the necklace since I was passing the bathhouse, and ended up giving it back to Abigail since everyone makes mistakes. It was also starfruit day, so we grabbed all of that and took it straight to the shed to turn some of it into wine, filling the rest of the cakes with blueberries. On day 186, I picked my cranberries and bought some more starfruit seeds for the vineyard bundle. I also bought this pink shirt because it was cute and I like pink things. Since I still had some speed grow down, I planted my new starfruit before I could forget. And with the cranberries, today was an amazing money day at 72,000 gold. On day 187, my bok choy was ready. With 58 gold star ones, I could now complete Pierre's prime produce. But when I went to drop them off, I got a cutscene with Abigail asking me to play Journey of the Prairie King with her. Again, I've literally never played this before, so as you can imagine, it did not go well. This game was honestly overwhelming. My brain was fried and I barely got anywhere, and Abigail was not impressed either, but at least I tried. With that distraction over, I dropped off the bok choy and sold the rest straight to Pierre, using the money to buy a workbench and a telephone from Robin. 
The next day was a good luck day, so I went to buy even more bums from the dwarf, and then teleported to the desert to work on the key challenge. I made sure to eat a dewdrop berry and drink some espresso before I left so I could still use the buffs. I didn't make it to floor 100 though, because I died on floor 59. Yikes. I lost my blackberries and some spicy eel, which could have been a lot worse really, but I did really want those blackberries back so I went to the adventurers guild to buy them. On the bright side, since I'd slain 150 magma sprites, I now had Marlon's telephone number so I could recover items from home. Oh, and I got the napalm ring. The following morning, I wanted to try again, so I munched on another dewdrop berry and headed back to Skull Caverns. Except this time, I died on floor 61. And lost a few things. As this was the final day, this does mean we failed our second key challenge in a row. But at least I had some caviar now. On day 190, I dropped off the caviar and took a trip to the volcano to combine my vampire ring and a ring of yoba. I then hunted for some cinder shards so that I could combine an iridium band with a protection ring. On day 191, I wanted some golden coconuts opened, so I waited very chill, very patiently, outside Clint's friend to open. Inside them, I got some tarot tubers, a fossil, some pineapple seeds, and a banana sapling, then returned to Ginger Island to pick up our fourth key quest. Let's see if I can actually do this one. When I got home, I tried to fish for trash in my little pond, but I actually kept getting fish. Felt a bit weird really, so I left that for now, and went to explore the new warp point in the Enchanted Grove. It took me to that place from that cutscene. I tried to steal some of the ancient fruit, but I couldn't, so I proceeded to fish in the sparkly water where I caught some cool new fish. The meteor carp and the golden fish. Oh, and you can catch the wood skip here too. Day 192 was Starfruit Wine Day. I picked up my wine and headed to Olivia's cellar to drop it off, claiming a massive 80 grand. This was well worth it. Then, it was time to attempt the new mines. Ooh, lucky ladder. I actually got a fair amount of loot. I got my first radioactive ore, I fought a boss slime for an enricher, and I got my first galaxy soul. But my god, these squiddy things were an absolute nightmare. I ended up warping home on floor 27, so I did feel like I did decently today. On day 193, I misclicked. How did I do this again? I didn't fix it yet though. I just had a coffee to drown my sorrows, then it was back to the new mines to make some more progress which continued into day 194, but I had to leave on floor 69 nice, because I almost died. So I went home to collect my truffles and then went fishing for the void salmon. Day 195 was filled with more mining. I even skipped Spirit's Eve this year to pass out on floor 106. Apparently, overnight we gave birth to a baby girl. I don't even remember when I decided to have a kid. But anyway, the game named her… uh, sure, Freckly. Now that I was no longer carrying a child, I had a much easier time getting through the mines today, reaching the bottom with plenty of time left in the day. There was this weird little shrine thing, which I'm guessing lets us do this version of the mines again. Whilst I've been in here the past few days, I completed a couple of monster slayer goals, so I collected my hard hat and savage ring, then finished off the season strong by expanding my ancient fruit crop and making a decent amount of gold. On day 197, I completed the missing bundle, which gave me this adorable cutscene. Be free, little friend! I also got this cutscene for Olivia's reception, which increased my friendship with the people there and gave me more benefits for drinking wine. I won't do this though because I really don't like wine. From there, I headed to the wizards to buy my first obelisk, but I was literally one clam short, so I left that for now and grabbed my star fruit from Ginger Island so that I could drop it off at the Aurora Vineyard on day 198. But nothing happened, so I returned to Ginger Island to check out Mr. Key's shop and bought Pierre's missing stock list as well as the key to the town. I also have no idea what I was thinking this day because I then proceeded to pick up the Junimo cart challenge again. I guess I wanted to redeem myself. I started to get kind of frazzled though, so I did give up on this pretty quickly, and instead went home to redo the paths. On day 199, someone was knocking at my door. It was Lewis. We hopped the fence alongside my farm, and for 250,000 gold, I could own this piece of land too. Of course, I decided to go with the expansion. All this room for activities. Meanwhile, something interesting was going on at Aurora Vineyard. It didn't seem to be fixed up, but I did meet Lil Apples. It said that from tomorrow I can come and talk to Apples, so I went over the first thing on day 200, but I couldn't find them. So I went to check out the new movie theatre and bought a ticket for myself and for Victor, and then ran straight home to give it to him because I was excited about seeing my first movie. I picked out an ice cream sandwich as a snack and then took our seats for the Miracle of Cold Star Ranch. Victor seemed to enjoy his snack very much, and I thought this was a lovely way to end our next 100 days. So, how do we do on our goals? Well, I do know we didn't finish finding all the golden walnuts, and to be honest I have no idea which ones are now left, so finishing this one will be interesting. We successfully married Victor, and even had a child with him. We got close to buying an obelisk, but didn't make it because of one single clam. 
And as for our tools, we got all of these ones to Iridium, with the watering can lagging behind at gold. That means we only completed one of our four goals. Massive yikes, really. Confirmed, I remain noob status. This game has so much to remember, even in its vanilla form, and I'm absolutely amazed by the amount of content we have left to explore, so you bet we're gonna have a part three. These 100 days videos are some of the favourite things I've honestly ever done, so if you've enjoyed yourself too I would really love if you could leave a like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!